Hey guys, in my kitchen today, I'm gonna to show you some of the best ways that I have learned to do freezer meals. If you've seen some of my previous freezer meals, um, some of the things that I've done have just not been sustainable for me. And so I end up not doing freezer meals, but there's really a lot of time saving benefits of doing them. So I have kind of tried to watch other people and see what they're doing. And I kind of take bits and pieces from that and have created sort of my own way of doing it. But I do want to mention that one of the biggest inspirations for making some major shifts with my freezer meals is by following um, Freezer Meals 101. They are a channel that's all they do is freezer meals and it ranges from like single portion freezer meals to um, they do these mega sessions that they make, you know, over a hundred meals over the course of like a day or two. So if you are interested in just looking exclusively at freezer meals, I highly recommend checking out their channel. The two gals that run it are awesome. They're super fun. Um, they sort of live regionally kind of close to where I live, which I also really appreciate. One of the biggest things that I was doing that I feel like is a mistake with freezer meals is completely cooking all my meals first. And at least in my first freezer meal, I know that I pretty much did that with everything that I made and it was so exhausting. It was completely unsustainable in pretty much every single way. And while I did have food sitting in my freezer that really just needed to be reheated, that ultimately isn't what we're really looking for. One thing I'll mention a couple of times as I'm doing it in the video is when you focus on the most labor intensive part of a meal, that in and of itself can make a huge difference. I like to focus on proteins and meats because they tend to take a lot longer for us to prepare and it gives a really good solid base for a meal and that to me sets us up and gives us more flexibility. One of the things that you'll see me do is make a meal and then make a couple more. That is something that I previously rejected in that people say well, it's easy to do because it doesn't take any more time. It does take more time and sometimes it takes a lot more time, I have found, but I have just gotten into a better routine with it. And I also, instead of doubling three, for example, three full meals, I might just start the meal and have sort of like a base for it, finish our dinner, and then put in the freezer a couple of sort of like partially done meals. Now, before we get into the meals, I just wanna say thank you for being here. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't already done so, that is a great way to support this channel. The more this channel grows, the more videos I can make. Sharing with friends and family the videos, liking, commenting, just saying hi. I appreciate all of that and it does not go unnoticed. So, all right, we'll get to the video. The first freezer meal we will prepare is taco meat. I'm going to get four to five pounds of meat going. This is meat that we already have frozen in packages and they're slightly larger than one pound each. We love having pre-made taco meat in our freezer. Because our meat is frozen, it takes a lot more advanced planning if we want to do anything with beef. So having something that is already set and ready to just re <laughs> thaw, reheat is such a huge time saver. And so by doing just the meat, we can also have more flexibility with it. So we can do hard or soft shell tacos, taco salad, use it in quesadillas, a beef and rice taco skillet type dinner. There are so many things we can do with it as opposed to it already being like completely made into a full meal. So we are going to go through this really fast, but we can always make more again soon. For my taco meat, I like to add a really healthy amount of taco seasoning as this is the base for the flavor. And I actually really like uh, buying the Frontier brand. We buy it in one pound bags and it lasts a long time, but there's no salt in it. So you can kind of tweak it from there. And then you just start tasting it and seeing whatever else you want to add. I like to add water because it doesn't get dry and it also leaves moisture in there for when it is done in the freezer, it thaws and is reheated. You don't really need to add any more water at that point because it's nice and it's got a lot of water already. So I added one cup of homemade tomato sauce and it feels so good to use these things that I've made from scratch in our meals to enjoy. The tomato paste I use is so delicious. It's hands down the best tomato paste I've ever had. So I always try to keep a stock around for you to use for things just like this. I also just love that it's in glass and because I get it in larger quantities, I tend to not run out before I can get a sale on it or something like that. And I either get it from our food co-op or you can also buy it from Azure Standard. And if you want, I do have um, a code if you wanna try Azure Standard, I'll put that in the description. 
When freezing meals, it is really important to try to use good quality containers. I try to steer away from plastics as much as I can, and I end up using either glass storage containers, which are my top favorite, these silicone reusable bags, which is my next favorite, and then sometimes if I have a fully prepared meal, I will use glass 9x13 baking dishes, and those I have just purchased at like a Goodwill or like a secondhand store, but I will link these silicone bags below as well if you want to try them out. Now I'm going to get my next freezer meal put together, and today I'm making chili, and I have three pounds, which is a little bit more than three pounds of beef and some ground turkey, which is about a pound and a half. And I'm actually going to use a different technique today um, or a different approach to this freezer meal. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually making dinner for tonight and then I'm going to freeze two full recipes too. So we're doing a triple batch dinner tonight and then we'll freeze two for future dinners. So you will notice that I'm making a lot with meat, beef specifically. That is because we have a whole lot of beef that we need to make sure we're using and working through so it doesn't get old in the freezer. And like I mentioned with the taco meat, if I can get this in a ready to go state, it will help make it easier to actually use up. Preparing proteins in general tends to be a fantastic way to save time in the kitchen and lends itself really well to making freezer meals even if it's just part of the meal, it saves a ton of time. With chili, I recommend making the chili that your family loves and enjoys. Basically, everything that would go in most chilies freezes super well, and you almost cannot go wrong. For our chili, I'm adding a ton of onions and bell peppers. This is sort of like the base of the aromatics that I put in. Um, I would add garlic, but I don't have a lot. I tend to always have powders around though, so I will add some later when I show you what seasonings I put in. And so using, I'm also using a partial things, partial onions, partial peppers that I had in the fridge, which feels great. All right, as long as I have the onions, peppers, and meat going and the onions, peppers kind of softening a little bit, I'm gonna throw in the spices so that as it softens, they kind of soak up that flavor. And then we'll get two of the meals taken out of here to freeze and then get rolling with the last one, which will be our dinner tonight. These are the spices I'm gonna add. I decided not to add fresh garlic. Instead, I'll add garlic powder, oregano, cumin, chili powder, paprika. These are not labeled. They need to be labeled. Um, and then I got, I had completely run out of coriander and I love the smell of this. There's something about coriander. That smell is like amazing and unique. And then some salt. So we're gonna go ahead and be very liberal with this because I love, we love all these seasonings. So we're just gonna go ahead and put those in. Now, if you wanted, you wouldn't have to add the spices all together like this. In fact, you wouldn't even have to add the onions and peppers. You could just brown the meat, add those to your containers to go into the freezer, and then add the peppers and onions raw to the freezer ones. But I prefer to have those vegetables softened up a little bit. Okay, I was so excited because when I was portioning these out, I realized that I probably have enough to split this between four different meals, so I had dinner for tonight and then I used three different containers here and these will go in the freezer so just like you don't have to saute the onions and peppers which when you do it actually reduces them a little bit so they don't take up quite so much space but also I'm just gonna put this in as a chili base and so when I go to cook this I will just add diced tomatoes tomato sauce and tomato paste and a little bit of broth to make it just a little thinner because it's a pretty thick chili and I don't typically add beans to my chili, 
but I could if I wanted to, or if I was if I was like, hey, let's pull this out because we're gonna have some people over, I could add beans or bulk it up with more tomato product and stuff like that. So I use these labels and this is something that I um, started doing from Freezer Meals 101 inspired by them. I get these labels and I put them on whatever my freezer container is. So whether it's a silicone bag or these, I literally just stick them right on top. And even if this sticker doesn't completely wash off, I'll just put the next label right on top and it's not a big deal. So I've got these so that whoever pulls this out of the freezer, if it's not me, it probably is gonna be me, but um, it's really easy to know exactly what needs to go in here. Now, the other thing is all of these things could go in the freezer container. There's obviously no space now in these glass 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 containers that I wanted to use. But if you were using a bag, whether it's a silicone or a plastic bag or whatever you felt like you wanted to use, um, you can actually go ahead and add the tomatoes, the tomato sauce, the tomato paste and broth to make it even uh, easier. So what I'm going to do is I actually have a special place on my pantry shelves that I keep the things that need to go in these freezer meals because if I have a need for tomatoes and tomato sauce and all you know all this stuff here but I don't actually have it in my house then it doesn't really help me as much as it could because then these things you know I need to go shopping or I need to add, remember to add something to my list so what I do is I keep these things in a special section downstairs on my pantry shelves and so that I don't use them for other meals. So I'm just going to leave these cool down. I like putting it on this nice high elevated cooling rack um, until these feel nice and cool. We'll put these lids on and get them in the freezer. And that is our chili. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you quick as I work up the chili that we're going to have for dinner tonight. All right, we are getting ready to do our next freezer meal preparation. I have four packages of pork sausage. Um, got these at Costco, five pounds total. Um, and, you know, even though we have a lot of beef in our freezer, we eat other things. Um, obviously, in the, uh, the chili, I use turkey. Um, we have chicken that I'm going to use in some of these recipes. So anyway, getting these big packages is really nice. However, frozen meat isn't near as helpful to me in the freezer as cooked meat. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all browned up. Some of it I'm going to use in a quiche or maybe multiple quiches. I think we'll have that for dinner tomorrow night and then I'll try to freeze a couple. Um, and then actually just having some ground pork sausage frozen on its own is gonna be helpful. So we can put it in um, spaghetti, we can put it in more quiches or frittatas or anything like that. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna get this browned up I figured you probably don't need to see me brown more meat, so I'm working on getting onions prepared for the quiche. We absolutely love caramelized onions in our quiche, so I'm making a big batch, and that means the food processor for slicing, as it makes things so, so, so much easier. In the pan with the onions, all I've added is butter and salt, and then we just keep stirring periodically until they are the color that we want. In addition to the caramelized onions, we're going to add um, some Swiss cheese, the ground pork sausage 
Um, I'm gonna chop this kale and just sort of steam it lightly so it doesn't take up so much bulk. Um, we've got two pans that are gonna go in the freezer here. The crust is kind of thin and a little patchy, but it's okay, it'll still taste really good. And then we're just gonna make a small one for us for dinner tonight. Six eggs in each with some milk, salt and pepper, and we shouldn't need anything else. It should be delicious. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bake all three of these quiches now. These two will cool down before putting them in the freezer. I think you can put quiches in the freezer unfrozen, so at this stage, and skip the cooking step. We prefer to cook them first, so that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to have this for dinner, like I said, and I'm going to make a little salad with like uh, tomato, cucumber, and some feta cheese, and just a little bit of um, olive oil and vinegar. Super simple, super easy, um, super delicious. The next freezer meal um, activity I'm getting going is I'm cooking up some chicken. I'm pre-cooking it. We're actually going to use one package tonight for dinner and then the other five packages will split between four different meals and so we'll get this cooked up and then we'll move on to the chicken meals. We got all the chicken laid out on these pans. I just put a light layer of salt and pepper um, and that's it because each of the meals that we're going to do are, are slightly different directions. So I didn't want to overly season them one way or another. Okay, we're going to get going on the first freezer meal that involves chicken. What we're going to do is make a, it's a creamy chicken pasta that is a one pot dinner and it is super tasty and it's super fast. And so what I like to do is use our glass dishes because this fits it perfectly. It's, it's all the way to the top but we make it work. Um, so right now I've started off with onions. We're gonna get our chicken put in. We're gonna put in some whipping cream, some diced, just regular diced tomatoes, and then some garlic powder and some Italian seasoning and a little salt and pepper. Now this also calls for pasta. Obviously it's a pasta dish, but I've made my labels that I'm gonna put on top here. And so when we go to cook it, we will add three to four cups of broth. I like a little bit more broth in it. Um, and I don't drain these to get that nice tomato -y flavor um, in addition to that. And about two and a half cups of pasta. You can use any kind of pasta. I really like, or we have found that we really like the medium shells. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, and then I got two more things on here. Two thirds cup of mozzarella, one half cup of Parmesan. Now that is for the entire dish. Um, and sometimes we just kind of top our bowls with it. Now it's really easy to make this recipe. It's like incredibly easy. So I often try to make more, you know, three at least at a time. Um, today I'm just doing two because I want to use that chicken for those other meals as well. You can use fresh garlic. I tend to like just using garlic powder and things. This is where it gets really full.
All right, we are gonna get some chicken pot pie going. This originally was gonna be two different freezer meals, but we need a dinner for tonight. And so we're gonna make one and freeze one, just like we've done with some of the other things. Um, we are in big kitchen projects. We've got, we're doing painting. Um, the kitchen is currently a mess because it's the kitchen's turn. Um, and we also discovered that we have a big issue with our freezer. We had um, an issue with one of our freezers, the meat freezer, no less. And so we had to kind of sort through that and deal with it and deal with some meat sooner, way sooner than we anticipated. So let's just go and get going on this chicken pot pie. I have made this chicken pot pie recipe before. Um, we really, really love it. And we oftentimes make chicken pot pie with biscuits instead of like a pie crust. But the advantage of having this frozen is that we could go either way. So if we felt like making a pie, we can make a pie. If we felt like doing biscuits, we can do biscuits. But if the filling is made and frozen, um, it gives us options and that's great. So actually the other video that I showed making this pot pie in was when I was using, I was working on using home canned food in meals and just kind of showing different ways to use it. And home canned chicken is phenomenal in chicken pot pie. And I think the reason for that is I think that just the chicken is so moist and has so, the chicken has so much it's so juicy from being canned. And it also has so much flavor because we're canning it in broth. I canned mine in broth anyway, but either way, it'll be delicious because when you can chicken, it makes its own broth. So it's really, really good in chicken pot pie. Highly, highly recommend. Okay, so normally when I do my freezer meals, I personally try to avoid putting my meals directly in plastic. Sometimes I will, it's just my own thing, I kind of pre-wash pre them a little bit and then I'll line it with some parchment paper or something like that, just so that my food isn't coming into direct contact with the plastic. That's just the way I prefer to do it. Um, but in this case, we had the chicken stored in a plastic bag. So I put, we chopped up half of it, and it's here for dinner. The other half is in this bag, and I'm actually going to use this bag for my freezer meal so that it doesn't go to waste. I, it's perfectly good. There's no holes or anything like that. Um, at least I don't think so. And so we're just gonna store this particular freezer meal in that plastic bag. All right, we got everything nicely sauteed. I added a little bit of flour, and then we added some broth. I added beef broth because I just actually had almost the exact amount still left over in my fridge. Um, it does call for chicken broth, but it's all right. And then I added, I didn't have any time, so I added a little Italian seasoning and then some ground rosemary, which is one of my favorite seasonings to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get this heated back up again, add in some milk, add the chicken, and get it cooking in our Dutch oven once I wipe it out. The last freezer meal that I'm gonna really make as a meal this time around is um, a big batch of Sloppy Joes. And we're actually gonna have it again for dinner tonight and put a couple in the freezer. It's just been so busy that that's the way it works. And we like the flexibility of that and freezer meals. Anyway, so I have about five pounds of beef going here. The only other thing I should say, um, and we're chopping up some peppers, I've got some red onions. Um, those are the only onions I have, so we'll go ahead and put those in and then we'll start putting in seasonings. And then we'll put in some seasonings. Uh, the other thing I like to do is just ground meat like this. We do have some pork um, that we did in the freezer, but I also love to do it with beef because there are so many recipes that call for beef that I, but again, if our beef is frozen, it's just a lot harder to use. So I like to, you know, pre-ground it or pre, pre-brown it and get it in the freezer just like that. And then we have it as a really flexible dinner protein already ready to go. So I might get some more of that going too, but for now we're gonna end with these Sloppy Joes.